of YouTube, this Aaron 619 coming back at you here with another video. I got some downtime in, so I figured I would take advantage of that and try to make a quick video on uh, these baseball cards in the background here so I can get them stored away. Uh, it's Friday, so uh, it's been a long work week and uh, happy that it's here. You know, I can get some quality time in with the family now. I uh, hope everyone out there, you guys have had a fantastic week as well. And uh, you guys are all situated and ready for whatever the weekend may bring you. So we're talking baseball here, guys. Um, so again, these, these are cards that are for my uh, pitcher set that I'm working on. Just random cards that, uh, you know, of players that I've watched, of players that I've researched through the books that I've read. And and right now i got a tremendous book that I'm reading. Um, I have to share it with you guys, uh, you know, probably in the next couple of videos. Just absolutely incredible on, uh, you know, different um, pitchers and, and uh, hitters as well in this book. So just absolutely incredible. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I think the first card I'm going to talk about here is uh, this 1969 Clyde Skeeter Wright uh, rookie card here. It's graded in a uh, PSA 8, which is uh, absolutely incredible here. Uh, this is the father of Jarrett Wright. Uh, many people may know who that pitcher is. Uh, if you're a Yankees fan, he played for the Yankees in various, pitcher, uh, various teams that he played for. But uh, with Clyde Wright... I got a nice book here over here that talked about him and uh, to his character. And um, I just wanted to add a nice rookie card to the collection here. He was a left-handed pitcher. He also pitched, too, in the uh, Japan League as well from 1976 through 1978. Uh, he had an 11-year major league career with 667 strikeout. He was an all-star and did pitch a no-hitter in 1970 against the Oakland A's. He also won 22 games, too, becoming the second 20-game winner in franchise history behind Dean Chance to do that with the Angels. So uh, just an incredible uh, rookie card of his. Uh, read a lot of stuff on him. He was criticized throughout his career. Uh, you know, he had some up and downs. But uh, make no mistake, this guy could get it done at times. And i uh, really stoked that I can add this 1969 rookie card to my collection. So going to place this one right here. Yeah, that's good. Next uh, rookie card here for my picture set that I picked up here is this beautiful 1981 Topps Jeff Reardon in a PSA Jim Matt 10. Jeff Reardon, of course, was a magnificent pitcher. Uh, I can talk about this guy all day long because I really love closers and relief pitchers, and he fits the bill, man. 15 years in the majors with 877 strikeouts. Big number here with 367 saves, man. Incredible. Four-time All-Star, World Series champion, and an NL Roll 8 relief man. Also was an NL saves leader. Just had a hell of a nickname too, man. The Terminator. This guy, along with uh, Lee Smith, man, they were feared back in the 80s. I'm telling you, they, they were so intimidating up in the mound, man. I mean, I just got... There's a fantastic book right here. I'm telling you that I could read stories from different players that just hate it when these guys got on the mound because they just was so dominant, man. And this guy right here pitched a blistering fastball, um, you know, that, that reached over 100 miles per hour at times, consistently pitched it at 98. This guy's ninth on the all-time save list, man. He was absolutely incredible, man. So... This guy gets a lot of res my respect royally, man, because this guy just done it all, man. So really stoked I can add this 1981 Topps rookie card to my uh, pitcher set there. Going to put that one right there. Next one I'm going to talk about, this guy right here, right here in California, right from Santa Monica. We're talking Dan Quisenberry, another dominant uh, closer, man. This guy was incredible. The Quiz, man, had an 11-year career with 244 saves, three-time All-Star, World Series champion, was a five-time Roll 8 relief man, also, I believe, was a five-time AL saves leader as well, but uh, lived right out here in Santa Monica. He's uh, legendary around there and went to the University of Laverne. This guy was magnificent at times, and I've, I've, I've watched pretty much, uh, you know, those times that he was. Uh, he had a sinking fastball, man. That was incredible. Uh, he was 
his, uh, you know, his way to control the ball was what he was really known for. And this sinking fastball he had was designed uh, to have batters hit it, but ground it when they hit. And he just knew exactly where to put that ball for that to happen. A lot of people would describe it. He had that submarine style, but, uh, you know, he was just magnificent at times. And I'm really stoked that I can add this 1980 Topps rookie card here in a Jim Mint 10. Stunning, man. I mean, really, really stunning card. I'm glad that I can add that to the collection because 1980 is, is truly a tough year to get uh, those good grades in there because, uh, man, they were just the borders are so thin. And uh, there was a lot of print defects going on back then with that year. So glad that I can add a Jim Mint 10 to the collection of uh, Mr. Quiz, uh, Quisenberry. And the uh, next picture I'm going to show you here, I don't know if he needs an introduction, but this guy right here has done it all, Fernando Valenzuela. But I tell you what, I mean, we all know what he's done in the majors. I don't need to uh, you know, reiterate what that is. I mean, if you don't know, uh, I'll... I'll Sure, you know, he's a, obviously he's a World Series champion. He won the Cy Young Award, Rookie of the Year. Uh, I believe he's a Golden Glove winner, too, as well. A two-time Silver Slugger Award winner, I think. And he also was an NL wins leader and definitely was a strikeout leader. And I know he did pitch a no-hitter in 1990 because I watched it. And then uh, I believe he's a six-time All-Star. And far as his strikeouts go, I believe he had a little bit over 2,000. He may have had 2,100. I'm not real sure, but I know it's between 2,000 and 2,100 in there. 17 year career, but that doesn't make, that's not this guy's makeup. You want to know about Fernando, you know, you need to go further back. You got to go back to Mexico. This guy was absolutely incredible in Mexico. Uh, he's uh, in the, the Mexican Hall of Fame. And I'll tell you a story. This was, this was just how dominant this guy was. Back in the day, they, the Dodgers organization had a recruiter by the name of Mike Beto. Um, and at the time, the Dodgers were in need of a good shortstop. So they had this real dominant shortstop that was coming out of the Mexican League as well. And uh, so Beto goes down there uh, to research this kid, uh, this tremendous shortstop that was down there. And well, that particular night, he was playing against the team that Fernando pitched for. So it was funny, real funny story. Fernando gets up on the mound, man, and it's just one, two, three. Struck this guy out with with some incredible, uh, you know, fastball and curveball that he had uh, in his arsenal back then. And the recruiter Beto said that it was just so magnificent and incredible to watch that they totally forgot about the reason that they were even down there to seek out this shortstop. They ended up talking to F Fernando, and the rest is history, man. Just absolutely incredible, man. He got really, really good. I'm telling you, when research this, if you guys are really interested in Fernando, seek out what he did, uh, you know, for the Mexican Central League. You know, seek out what he did for them, and then, uh, you know, it, it, it'll tell the true story to, to who he was. He was such a special pitcher and way ahead of his time, man. Just absolutely dominant back then, so... Glad that I can add this rookie card to the collection. This is his 1981 Fleer rookie card, greater than the Jim Mint 10. I think this card is a little underrated, too, as well. It's one of my favorite rookie cards of his. I absolutely love the black background and the blue border around there. really brings out his face. He's got that stare, uh, you know, getting ready to go up and uh, make that pitch. But... Uh, a remarkable card, and I'm glad that uh, I can have this in my collection. Um, so that's all I got, guys. Uh, I hope, uh, you know, again, everyone enjoys their weekend. I'll probably be back uh, before the weekend is up to make another video. So as always, guys, you guys stay blessed out there, and I'll talk to YouTubers on the next one. Bye.